So what tuning am I in? Do you know? I'm in open G. Didn't really hit that string. In fact, it's not even in tune. Um, although when I went to, I could hit it on, on this chord. So I'm in open, uh, open G, and uh, that was, uh, so D, G, D, G, B, D. Open G, oops, open G tuning. And it's a great tuning for slide. Uh, um, it's the Keith Richards tuning. I think a lot of times he wouldn't have a six string on there. So, you know, it's like. But a lot of bands, um, uh, I think uh, Black, Black Crows, they sometimes use open G. Uh, Keith is almost always an open G. It's pretty funny. It's like, wow, it's crazy. And he makes it sing, you know? Um, and uh, so if I play the top five strings as a G chord, I can hit the bottom string too, but that's going to be a D, so it's going to make it sound more like a second inversion G chord, meaning the fifth is on the bottom. <laughs> there won't be a quiz on that. I'll probably get my mug in about two weeks. I need to, oh, you know, Alex was here yesterday and I forgot to ask him how to do this. Uh, I got to turn, I, so my daughter did the image uh, of the guitar that I posted on the, the Discord and uh, on the t-shirt and um, the, um, shoot, sorry, my brain just shut off. Um, but it's not, um, I couldn't get rid of the background on the image. There's a way to do it. It's not a ping, it's something else, and I, I've just gotta figure out how to do it. Uh, but basically, just just the black ink, I only want that. So that way you can change the color, color of the shirt, because I think Bonnie doesn't want a white shirt. So, <laughs> and I, no, I want, I want there to be as many options as possible. So, um, but the, uh, um, yeah, and then also the weird thing is that it, I'm just using the Teespring, which is the which is the vendor, and so they have this shirt design, you know, uh, window on their on their website, and so I was doing it through there, but it, I couldn't even like change the justification of the text. That's why the text on the coffee mug is to the left. I wanted to put it center, uh, you know, but it didn't even give you that option. I'm like, the, it, it gave you the option of the size of text and some of the the different fonts, but yeah, it was kind of weird. Get out of town. Hook, Hook ordered the coffee mug and it's delayed. It said, I ordered it, but I ordered, mine was cheaper. It was like eight bucks or something because I'm not getting a, a royalty on it. So they just basically, they can give me one for cheaper because I, I just want to see what it looks like, you know. But I mean, I just sat, you know, one night sat on my laptop and designed it and went, oh, I can do a shirt. Okay. And stickers. Okay. And tote bag, you know, so I just kind of went okay to all of them and it just kind of did it. So, um, I'll, the next one, I'll, I'll make it a little bit more. I'll try to, the, the next one I think is going to say, don't worry. Uh, there won't be a quiz on this and it'll have a little guitar on it that my daughter designed. So, uh, I worked with a couple young, um, aspiring pop artists yesterday, brother and sister. And the, the, the girl, um, she, she loved the, the Epiphone that Emma designed. She was like, wow, where did you get this? And I said, well, I mean, I got a guitar center, but my daughter did the artwork. And she goes, that's so cool. Would she do one for me? I said, sure. You know, she's out of work right now, so she, she needs some income. So I'm in, I'm in uh, Open G. And um, one of the things, like the, the thing that Keith Richards does all over the place on, on, on the... Open G is he does suspensions, and remember, 
I always say this, music is all about tension and release. You know, you create some tension and, you know, like the five chord goes to the four, uh, five chord goes to the one chord or the four chord kind of is the amen cadence to the, to the one chord. Uh, so that would be like C to G. Uh, D. But if you do like, you put a seventh in that D chord, it's a little bit stronger of a, you know, a little bit stronger of a, that's not quite right, what would it be? Barely hear that top note. Um, but the, the more tension you create, the more, you know, the more release there is in it. And, um, and you can create tension a lot of ways, uh, rhythmically, melodically. I suppose you could create tension lyrically, uh, you know. I mean, I know you can have very tense lyrics, uh, and you could resolve them, I guess. Um, hey, Leo. Vito. Long time no see. Um and so uh, I'm gonna go shorter today because I have some, a bunch of stuff I have to do today. And I'm, it's, I put in the title of the video, the chord thing, um, uh, chord progressions, uh, but we, we, I may just do kind of an ask me anything. So I'm sure <laughs> Vito will keep me busy. But you guys can start asking questions if you want. If you have some questions about any guitar stuff or uh, anything like that, I'd be happy to answer those if I can. And then, um, so the, the sus thing I was talking about is, so here's the G chord like this. Here's a sus four. See how that wants to resolve. Here's the sus two. I'm at the second fret of the third string. And that could either go down to G, that A note, or it kind of wants to go to also up to B. the six which is right here but where it gets fun is when you do combinations of those so we have the four one I mean sorry four three two one six five okay here's the five the, the fifth of the chord the root of the chord and the third of the chord right there and you could do this on a regular tuned guitar to be honest because I, those three notes didn't get changed and I'm in open G right now um, but uh, you could do the the two one and the four three. The six. So I could do. Uh, so what Keith Richards does a lot is he does the four three and the five or the six five a lot. So he's like. So I guess today's about sus chords. No, but those those are some, you know, like the, the suspensions, it even sounds like it's causing tension. Suspended, suspense, you know? And so that, those, doesn't want to sit there. It wants to go somewhere, right? So that's tension. If I just sat there and played the whole song with one, like that chord, and then the last chord of the song was, now this, what you could call this, because keep in mind, I'm an open G. This could be a kind of a C2 over G because this, this represents a two. Um, uh, but normally, like if you had a, if you're playing a G chord and you went like this, uh, that would be C over C over G. And then you could do that. So I can, I'll go back to standard tuning.
So, like, if you play G like this, kind of the old school G, three, two, zero, zero, uh, zero, three, that would be G. Um, you could play C over G like this. So it's a C chord with a G in the bass. That's what that means. When you see a slash chord, it's the first note letter is um, is the chord, and the second letter is what's on the bass. So, um, like for example, you could play just a regular G like this, and then if you did like that, uh, that would be um, G over F sharp. Oh yeah, yeah. I, no, I saw that. Uh, you know. Can you sample uh, Ventura Highway by America? Can I, or you mean for a song? I'm not sure I understand uh, HB. Um, let's see, Andy. Hey Andy, good to see you. Um, so let's see. A veto, you asked, I saw a video on someone who says it's easier to learn the guitar notes on the fretboard by some acronym pattern that just constantly repeats. Um, that may be, uh, maybe it's the, is it the cage that we talked about way back when, first in the beginning? Um, it may be the caged thing, I'm not sure. If I don't know, if I didn't see the video, I couldn't tell you. And then how to incorporate diminished chord uh, for passing. Um, the diminished chord... One of the most common locations for the diminished chord would be, um, you know, the diminished chord is often a substitute for a seventh chord. Um, because when you have a seventh chord, remember, you have a diminished in there. So when we play like D7, you've got this tritone there, okay? So D7, very easy chord to play. Uh, 0, 2, 1, 2 is D7, okay? Oops, ah, D7, okay. So that's a very simple chord. Um, and it's got, a, it's got that tri that diminished in it. Now remember, we talked about diminished seventh chords a while ago, it's been a while. And it, the diminished seventh chords are stacked minor thirds. Um, and the cool thing about that is they, they definitely cycle around, okay? Um, so a diminished chord, in, for example, would be D uh, sharp, diminished seventh okay so all i did was i took the, I, I played d7 with these three fingers instead of these three okay and i uh then i put my first finger on the first fret of the fourth string okay and that has a really strong leaning up to the e minor right and so this would probably be the five chords it would be in g So that's a very common uh, the four, five chord when you're going to the six chord. So we're going D to E minor. I can even go D to D diminished, D sharp diminished. It creates a lot of tension, right? The, this note wants to go down to B. This note wants to go up to E. This note can go either way. And then this note wants to go up to G. So you've got a huge amount of tension there, just like you would with a B7, okay? So, for example, a chord progression could go um, you could go C, I'm sorry, G, C, D sharp, uh, how do I do diminished? Ooh, like that. 7 to E minor. But also, you could go G, C, B7 to E minor. Uh, so, we talked about this before. Um, if we take this diminished chord, so play this chord. This is a D diminished. Let's see. Oh, uh, oh, the that's yeah, uh, Avito, the B E A D G C F. Yeah, maybe there's some pattern on the fretboard um, to do with that. I'm not sure. B E A D C. Let's see. B E A. D, G, C. Uh, but that's the order of flats. And backwards is the order of sharps in the key. So if you, if you want to know what, you know, it's, uh, if a chord, if a key has four flats in it, then B, E, A, and D are flatted. 
if it has four sharps in it, then F, C, G, D are flat. I, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's uh, uh, a veto. Um, you know what? I was just wondering about this the other day. Can I add? Can I add a text? Text. Whoa. What, do, what happens if I do this? I hit OK. All right. So, <laughs> B E A D. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's all giant. What was it? B E D G C F. Yeah. OK. But let me make it smaller. Can I make Oh, I can make it smaller. There we go. I just drag the corner like that. Okay, so this is what uh, this is what a veto is referring to, um, and so if you want to know, like if a song has four flats in it, then the flats are going to be B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat in that order. If it has four sharps, it's going to be F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and D sharp. So going uh, wait <laughs> this way <laughs> is sharps, and going this way is flats. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so. Um. Hey, guitar real. I know it's real because <laughs> for years we lived in California for years, and and Beth and I were driving up the coast, and uh, uh, she it was El Camino Real, and it, no, it's real, <laughs> but she thought it was real. Hey, I thought Yosemite was Yosemite for a long time. I didn't know, you know, I was looking at Yo Yosemite and I'm like, oh, Yosemite. And then I remember they said Yosemite Sam and I went, oh, that's Yosemite. <laughs> so, there's a lot of weird words like Coenga Boulevard. Uh, like, oh, let's see, what's another one? Sepulveda. Okay, so getting back to the, uh, I could delete this now. Yeah. Um, Getting back to the uh, the diminished thing. Okay, so this is a this is a D sharp seven diminished chord. Let me write this out. So X X one two one two. Okay, and this is called D sharp um, diminished seven. Okay, and the notes in that are D sharp up a minor third F sharp up a minor third A up a minor third C. All right. Those are the notes in, you know, D-sharp, F-sharp, A, and C. They're not in order. If I were to play them in order, uh, let's see, D-sharp, F, wait, what is it? D-sharp, F-sharp, A, quite a stretch. But that's just, a, this is just another voicing. It's another way to arrange the same notes. <laughs> Well, you don't live in Los Angeles for almost 40 years and not pick up a little bit of Spanish. A little, very little bit. Um, now, the thing about this, though, it's all, not only is this a D7, uh, a D sharp 7 diminished, it's also an A diminished 7th chord, it's also a C diminished 7th chord, and it's also an F sharp diminished 7th chord. It's four chords in one. Uh, because, like I said, the 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 D it's a D sharp F sharp A C is is the D sharp diminished. But if you start on the F sharp A C D sharp, that's the same as uh, F sharp diminished seventh. And then if you start on the A, you go A C D sharp or E flat um, F sharp. That would be an A diminished. It's the same. It's the same four notes. And if you start on C, C, D sharp, F sharp, and A, that's a C diminished. So that means that you can repeat this chord every three frets. So if we go at the first fret, we're here. It's and this is an, a D sharp diminished seventh chord. So is this. So is this. So is this. I always use this as an example of the, you know. You must be the red. I can't be the red. You must be the red. I can't be the red. <laughs> Dastardly Dan or something like that, right? It's a very, very old school movie kind of piano thing. Um, and so there are really only uh, one, two, three, four different diminished chords. Um, 
No, actually, there's only three. Diminished seventh chords. And then they just repeat themselves. Okay. Then the other thing that I think you can do from this is, is cool. I can, with, by moving one of these notes down, I can turn it into a seventh chord, just a regular old dominant seventh chord. So, for example, if I take off the first finger, I'm back to D7, right? If I take off, if I take the second finger, or the second fret of the third string off, then, I, then I'm here at A flat 7. So if I take the A down to A flat now, that's an A flat 7 chord. Okay? So D, D sharp diminished 7th, D7. D sharp diminished 7th, A flat 7. D sharp diminished 7th, if I take off that, it's a B7. If I make the B string open, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, tab these out in a second. And then the last one is if I take, take this note down a fret, I get this. And that's F sharp 7, or F7. So, so any one of those, so you could do the opposite, you go the opposite way. Any one of those, if you take the root of the chord, uh, of any seventh chord up a half step and leave all the other notes alone, you are going to create a diminished. So, uh, for example, we take A7, okay, so here's A7, X0, 2, 0, 2, 0, and that's A7, all right? But if you just take that A up a half step, now you got A sharp diminished seventh. Does that make sense? I think this is right. So now it would be X one two zero two zero. Uh, we will take a bar chord. I I probably just do something like that. You just you could play the top string, but I would just play the. Like A sharp, like this is A sharp diminished seventh here. Um, I would probably play it like that. And this again, this is totally movable, but you're gonna have a couple strings you gotta dead. Um, X four uh, uh, like that. So if I was going say from That's probably how I would play A7 so much, much, much of the time. You know, and I like having that, that leading note on the bottom. Like I said, I could play go. I could do any one of these. So I could go down to this one. Bonus points for the <laughs> pay the rent reference here. And, and here's a, just what I'm doing there. Just uh, uh, no quiz on this, but if you're curious what I'm doing there. So that's an E7 chord. I'm just taking the C7 chord and I'm going up. Um, so I'm playing E7 um, like this. Um, E7, X, uh, what is that? 7, 6, 7, 5, X. You could play the top string, but I wouldn't because you want to keep this a movable chord. So I dead in the bottom string and the top string. It's a, it's a middle four string chord. What did I do? Oh, I did. Did I do air quotes? <laughs> did I do air quotes? Shoot. Um. So. So, um, so when I went to the E7, you can also, if you want, um, there is no fifth on here. This is an E, a G sharp, a D, and another E. So there's no fifth. So a lot of times people play it like this. So that's technically E7 over B, okay? E7 over B. Um, and so that would be, let me write it out here. E7 slash B, and that would be seven, X, Let's see what is it? Seven X. I'm gonna get it right. Okay, so that's E seven over B. But what? 
but what chord we're going to next is A7. So to make to create more tension, again getting to my point of tension and release, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna move the bass note from B to B flat. So now technically what I do is I took that fifth, remember the fifth is in the bottom, and I flatted it. So now it's an E7 flat five chord. It's a really nice chord. But it's not just an E7 flat five chord, it's also a B7 or B flat seven flat five. Here's B flat seven. I can play it like this. And here's the fifth, and I, there, so they're the identical chord. So this is both uh, E7 flat five and B flat seven flat five, and it's basically played six X, six, seven, five X, okay? And what that does, does is create a lot of tension that wants to go to the, right back to A. And basically the tension is these, right? These, all three of these notes are just going down chromatically one fret. That's what chromatic means, so that was redundant. <laughs> Take a sip for redundancy. <laughs> Cheers. Don't add that, Gary. Because <laughs> that might be a, we might all be out having to go to the bathroom every five minutes. Okay. So, um, and but the top note is staying the same. So the top note is kind of a, a harmonic anchor. Remember, I was doing that with. I can just keep moving those chords. I can keep moving those notes down, you know. All I'm doing is I'm just going the whole time keeping the E on top, <laughs> basically. It's a good exercise. It's a good finger twisting exercise. Uh, Avito, you had another question. Let's see. Wondering if the 15 second comment delay is for the. Nah, it's probably just because it's going to space and back. Maybe, but um, I, if a comment. I, I'm not approving any comments unless the algorithm says comment held. So none of these comments are being approved. They're all just. And no one's sitting there waiting to approve these comments. Um, yeah, harmony in general is fascinating. Piano, guitar, all that. Very fun. Uh, let's see, how do you harmonize, on, let's see, yeah, how to harmonize on electric during a solo? Well, that's hard because if you're just one person, you need a harmonizer to do it, and you'd need a harmonizer that technically is a smart harmonizer that would follow your key, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. I mean, in the studio, have I ever done a harmonized solo? I can't even think I've ever done it. Um, but, I mean, I, I use what's called double stops all the time. Um, and so double stops are basically harmonizing um, with yourself on the fly. That's, I'm basically harmonizing. Here's the melody. Here's the harmony. And together it's... Bruce, I hope the thunderstorm doesn't stop you from finishing my uh, cigar box guitar, man. Come on. <laughs> you need to get, like, power tools that you can pedal. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah, you're talking about yeah, what I'm doing, basically, then. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of uh, um, kind of visualizing your scales if you're in the key of C. You know, so you can see the, um, let me do this here. I mean, it's easier to do on one string. So if you just play like a G scale, 
on the G string. And then you play the, um, the, the third up from that. So you're playing the G scale starting on B, on the B string. Then you can see all those shapes. And the easiest is on the third and fourth string, uh, or second and third string. For thirds, anyway. Because on, on, on the top two strings, if I ever do the C scale, oops, on the, and then I'm going to have a little bit more of a stretch. But then you, you don't want to just harmonize in thirds, you want to be able to do six. So like in G, here's a G scale on the top string. And then down a six. And the sixth is an inversion of the third. See, there's this is the same harmony, except I've got the, the G on the bottom instead of on top. There's the thirds. Same thing with six. Oops. And I mean this is That's what, those are six. You hear them a lot in blues or in country music. Uh, let's see, which scales? Um, thanks, two broken thumbs. Um, let's see, I pull it up, yeah, because this is 76. So it's, it's quite a bit of videos. Let's see, uh, um, I think... Did I, was, did I literally call, because I put it in all caps in the title. So if you go to my, if you go to my channel and then click on videos and then click on live videos, let's see, we did, um, we're doing chord progressions. I'm going to change though. I think on Monday I'm going to change that. Uh, we did three, four lessons on the dad gad tuning. Uh, then we did strumming and grooving for a while. Today, I'm just kind of answering questions. So if you're expecting more, I mean, chord progressions, I'll play into it. And then we did lesson 53 is blues basics. We did that, kind of messed around with the blues for about a week, 10 days. And then finger picking, I showed you a bunch of um, Giuliani arpeggios that we utilized and stuff. Chord theory uh, ended at lesson 29. Uh, let's see. Okay, lesson 22 is still chord theory. Circle of Fifths was Lesson 21 and 22. Chord Theory Modes was, uh, I talked about modes, um, 13, 14, 15, and 16, 17. So that might have some stuff. And then the Caged Method too. Um, I also, when I did, um, you know, that's not a bad idea. We could do, I could do scales. Um, I could do, I mean, because we really have them. really haven't talked about open scales at all. Um, and get, you know, the great thing about guitar, as opposed to piano, is that if you learn a, a, a diatonic scale um, without open strings, it's totally movable. So that's G major scale, and then G A flat major. Totally movable. On piano, you have to like learn everyone individually. Um, but, uh, you have to also, with guitar, you have to time your right hand and your left hand together, which is difficult, but, but with open scales, and that's when I could generate some, uh, some, uh, diagrams too and post them here so we could be following them. So I could do G, G minor. Uh, I don't think I ever do open G minor. It's weird. I mean, I do without even thinking about it, but I've never like, like sat down and played a G minor, scale. but G, G major pentatonic, which is great for bluegrass. And I mean, one one skill, you, one thing you could develop to help you play in like a basic bluegrass thing, is to be able to go back and forth between. 
G major pentatonic and C major pentat pentatonic and then D major pentatonic. So yeah, I want to play that G note. But when I play D over D, I usually do include the. I usually include the B and the G, so I, I don't. I don't usually think D pentatonic over D for some reason. Over the five chord. Um, and one of the things you can do, it's fun, is just to hit the chord and then play the pentatonic. And maybe even try to leave the chord on for a bluegrass kind of vibe. You can leave the chord on while you play, and then be sloppy with your right hand. Don't worry about hitting one string. You can hit two. So, um, Vito, is there an exercise to improve on sliding down your fretboard down all the octave, like on one string? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. You mean just like going like that? I mean, I'm not sure if that's... Uh, I know, like Django, what he would do is he would... He could make it sound like a chromatic scale, like he was going. He would just go. He, he was he could nail it though. I don't, it's like a real timing thing between the two hands. Uh, so I don't really have any tricks for that because I'm not very good at it. But uh, let's see. Tom uh, Leo is asking me a question. Let me let me get some different questions here. Let's see. What about just playing the root note you know, to harmonize? Uh, I don't know. So I'm just making sure I don't. Uh, do you use some exotic scale? Uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes I, for, especially on ooh. You know, that pseudo exotic, I guess. Uh, let's see, Leo, what are you asking me? Uh, Tom, any advice as I am creating several songs and I have singing and lyrics and want to use the guitar to accompany it? Creating a wall of sound based in the guitar playing. Um, well, here's the thing: you can, you, if you're recording, if you're using a recording software, um, you can go ahead and just lay down a bunch of guitars and come up with a bunch of ideas. You know, do, start out with a foundational guitar, maybe just strumming the chords. <clears throat> you know, sing your song, and then start layering stuff. I would, I would try to get the melody on there as soon as possible, so that any. Uh, and I was going to talk about this at some point, I think, is playing rhythm guitar, or creating rhythm guitar parts. Um, and uh, the, and that means a billion things, a rhythm guitar part. But um, the, uh, what I would do is I would just come up with a real basic, you know, whatever the chord progression is, and do that. And then once you have the melody down, recorded, then you can start layering other guitars on top of that. And then you may get rid of this guitar, the original guitar altogether. You may get rid of everything but one of the guitars. You may lay down 10 guitars and decide the song sounds best with this one thing you did. But it's, I think it's important to know what... I hate to play a, on a song that doesn't have the melody on it yet. Um, if I'm in the studio, it's always great if you're doing a, a playing on a pop record that they'll have a demo singer sing, um, ha, at least have the... Um, uh, you know, a demo vocal track on there so you have an idea what the melody is because you don't want to clash with the melody. If the melody's, you know, on a G chord and singing a C note, you don't want to do a B because that's going to be like you're at this, this tension with the melody and they'll just not use your guitar. So uh, that that's one thing you could do, Leo. Um, and, and then what you could also do is 
if you're just just have acoustic guitar you don't have electric or anything like that then what you could do is you could do like i said do the bed and then maybe you take the acoustic guitar and go do like a bass line and then maybe find a middle thing So that would work over the... And then this... And then maybe a top thing. Mm. Something like that, or you could even go... And then you just create these layers, and you can spread them around, so you can have the high guitar over here, and the mid guitar here, and the bass guitar there, and... Uh, and that way you get the stereo spread in the vocal. A lot of times what you do you want to do is you want the vocal to be in the middle. And so you can move everything off center so that like one guitar is here and one guitar is here. And nothing else is in the middle with the vocal. Maybe the kick and snare. But other than that, if you had kick and snare. I don't know if that even comes close to answering your question. Okay, so you already have the melody uh, recorded singing. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Guitar real. Guitar real. I have to go now. Thank you, Tom, for the class, and thank you for all the... Res no worries. Like, everybody loves a newbie. <laughs> so, unless it's a game, unless you're playing a first-person shooter game, then nobody, everybody loves to, to annihilate the newbie. Uh, yeah, I'm here Monday through... Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so, at this point. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, and if, if, you know, if you listen to pop records... For the most part, especially nowadays and for the last 10 years, pop records are very, tend to be very minimalistic. Um, but, you know, if you have a good idea, throw it down. And you can always, you know, mute it later and not use it. But it's like, oh, this is a cool idea. Okay, this is cool. And something you think is a cool idea today, tomorrow when you listen back to it, you may go, eh, no, that doesn't work. Um, I've done that a million times. So, um, I, I, I feel like, yeah, you, you, you know, if, if a song is inspiring guitar parts and ideas, then go ahead and lay them down. You can delete them later or drum ideas or keyboard ideas or bass ideas or background vocal ideas, things like that. And when, I know, Leo, you're not talking about writing a pop song. You're just talking about a simple song or I mean, a, not a simple song, but a, a maybe I don't know what style of music you're talking about. I'm sure it's probably not pop. Um, uh, but, you know, I do think that there's a lot of things you can learn from pop music in general. Um, one thing, the importance of a good melody. Uh, there's a lot of songs that people write and they play them for me and, and you know, oh, how do you like this country song? And it's like, two note melody. I'm like, yeah, it's not very interesting. Um, or, you know, a, a blues tune, that's even more common when somebody's like, oh yeah, listen, check this song out. And it's like, a little boring, you know, it's gotta have something going on. Uh, you, could, you could try to come up with some parts and alternative tunings, the only problem with that is um, you're going to uh, have to figure out the song in the, with those tunings. Um, so that might, you know, uh, might cause problems. The other thing you could do, too, is, like, you could create parts like um, you could do, like, it's, again, to say the song is just G, C, I mean, sorry, G, E minor, C, D. Um, something as simple as that. Um, you could do, come up with a part that's just like, you know, um, just G, G, E minor, C, like that. It's really high, it's out of the way, everything. But then you could put a like a delay on it. Like you could add delay and make it in time with the music. So it could be bump, 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 bump. You know, it'd be like bump, 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 bump. And you could even pan the delay so it's like bump, 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 bump. And that, I do that kind of stuff all the time. I mean, the edge did that too with like, you know, you would take out his scratchy pick. You know, and the delays would make it sound huge. So that's always fun. Uh, the secret to the the huge dot the delay thing is to to set the delay to dotted eights. I don't have my lot. I don't have logic up right now. I'd, otherwise, I'd show it to you. But uh, maybe another time we can. T again, I think I'm. I mean, I, th I think, Catherine, I think it's a good idea to maybe do scales. I didn't really do, I did scales in DadGab, and I talked about scales and modes, but I didn't really, you know, we could sit down, because I, I, I realize oftentimes I, I get kind of advanced on some of the stuff. Uh, it's hard not to, um, but 
on these live streams. So I want to keep them a little bit more basic. I'm, I'm still trying to kind of formulate how, how basic I'm going to make uh, my beginner lesson, like my progressive lesson thing that I'm doing. I, I hate to call them lesson of the week because the first ones are so simple. I think lesson of the minute, you know, like you could do the lesson and then just watch the next one, then watch the next one. So I may just call them lesson one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, ping pong delay. Yep. Yeah, Echo Boy is a great. Yeah, Echo Boy is great. My son, son Alex goes, "I'm gonna buy you Echo Boy for for Father's Day." I'm like, "Cool." So, uh, but I have I have like ten different echoes that do that. I really like Valhalla echoes. Um, they're they're my favorites. Uh, Valhalla stuff is just great. I hear them all the time. I hear the reverbs all the time on um, uh, on pop songs. Um, and they're everything they make. They just sell for fifty bucks. So not the whole catalog, but I think they only have six things that you can buy, uh, different reverbs. I really like the plate reverb. That reminds me of the 80s when I started doing session work. Uh, that was a big thing. My knee still hurts too, by the way, but it's, be it's getting better. And I've got to go here in a little bit, but... Oh, Jim stepped out. Oh, can't log on. Need to make a new account. Oh, funny, Verdi. Hey, Verdi, we haven't seen you in a while. Uh, I'll touch my face so everybody can take a drink. Cheers. Uh, so, uh, uh, oh, quite a while ago, Vito, you mentioned um, uh, having having like a pe the G note be in every or the root being in every harmony or something like that. Uh, that would be like uh, doing a pedal thing. trying to do it with a fretted finger. Um, and that also talks, you know, like very common in, in rock music for a while there, they did pedal chords where they play like a D chord. And there's a D in the bass of all these chords. So it was D, G over D. A over D, F over D, E over D. When the, uh... when the Chicago, what's the Chicago tune? That's... sound, right? E-flat over D, which is weird. Uh, shoot, what was the name of that Chicago tune? It was a ballad. I remember seeing them do it. It might have been post-Terry Kath. I started watching a documentary um, about Terry Kath on Amazon, I think. I haven't finished. I just, just started. I got to finish it, but um, it was done by his daughter who never knew him because uh, he accidentally shot himself in the head. He was like, hey, check out this gun. It's, you know, not, he thought it was lo not loaded, but it, it's a classic. The, the, uh, cartr the cartridge? Ink cartridge wasn't in the gun. <laughs> and I'm not a, I'm not a gun person. Uh, but there was one in the chamber. So it's like, oh, no. In fact, they, they, they interviewed the guy that was sitting there. He was like, when it happened. It's like, oh. <laughs> Congratulations, Diane. You got your Paul Reed Smith. That's amazing. So what kind of music do you want to play? What's your what's your favorite style of music? And why did you get a Paul Reed Smith? Is it an acoustic or electric? Because they do make acoustics, right? But I'm pretty sure it was an electric, right? I think I had my PRS out um, for one of our videos. Did I not? Um... 
I'm changing guitars so you can all take a sip. Um, acoustic, okay. So, who's your favorite artist, Diane? Alex and I were shredding yesterday. It was pretty funny. We were, we were uh, just shred like I I forgot about some of these tunes. I I wrote I wrote a bunch of songs a while ago. Um, uh, and uh, I just, see, like back in the early two thousands, I was doing kind of working on a rock record uh, that I never finished, but. Um, Uh-oh. Did it just reboot? Let's see if I can get some sound here. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, this one's great. Okay, so let me see what this, if this comes through. Yeah. It's kind of like a country thing. And uh, I'm like, how did I do this? And the whole premise of the song was I wanted to do an exercise. Um, it's a, the song's called Mind Open Spaces. And uh, I did want to do this exercise. Hey, Charlie, I want to do an exercise that was like, uh, write a song that used unison, a minor second, a major second, a minor third, a major third, a fourth, an augmented fourth, a fifth, an aug uh, a minor sixth, a major sixth, a minor seventh, a major seventh, and an octave. So it's like, you know, it's just like <laughs> the, the melody just kept, keeps getting wider. And then what I did, there's a B section um, and every other B section, like it, it goes to B section. Uh, the song's basically an E uh, mixolydian, like E blues. Um, and I go to the B section and I solo. The first time I solo, I only use unisons which would be unisons would be like yeah, I'll do it on the acoustic because I'm not plugged in um, so there's you know, what is it um, and then uh, that would be unisons So any, you know, I could pick any note in the key and just do a unison with it. I could do two Ds, right? And then the second half of that solo in that break, little short break, I would do minor seconds. And then the next one I did seconds and minor thirds. And the next solo, the B section, I did major, major thirds and perfect fourths. And so it's, it was just like this study of like, how can I solo only using one interval? Um, and it was, so it was kind of like this, you know, whoops, uh, let's see, where is it? <laughs> I, I I don't even know if I have it tapped out anywhere. comes the B section. Oh, minor seconds. Major second. Minor thirds. And then major third. Fourth. Sharp. Fat. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just this funny that I did this, but it was, and Alex was like, whoa, that's crazy. We thought it was pretty cool. Um, but it's, it's like, I just wanted to create, you know, it, I, I think it was probably because I got that book, um, oh, uh, Mitch, is it Mitch Goodrick's book about the guitar? Um, and it was like, he would give you these um, 
chores, these, these exercises, basically they were more mental than anything. He said, okay, play um, solo over blues in B flat, only using the B string and the A string. And so you've got it like, you got this, you know. You know, you get to the F chord and then, you know, you, and you want to go like that, but you can't because it's not, you know, you're not allowed to do that string. And it was that kind of, those kind of mental exercises trying to get you out of your box as a playing. Because when you've been playing a long time, you tend to kind of gravitate towards these things that you've done, especially when you're nervous, especially when you don't have any ideas, especially when you're not in the zone. I mean, that's the most fun place to be when you're working or, you know, you're playing and you're in the zone. And, uh, and it's fun because some of these songs that I've recorded, I feel like, when I was soloing, like so here, at this point now it goes back to it goes back to the A section, and that's unison. Minor seconds. Major second. Minor thirds. Oh, that was major second. Minor, still minor. Yeah, I love that. It's so weird, but the, that's a major second. So. And all of those notes are in the key of E mixolydian. Almost as like a cartoon. Um, but that was me just using intervals. Okay. Uh, oh, it's 250. Well, thank you for keeping tabs on the clock there. I mean, it's not critical that I stop it at, at noon, but um, I do I do want to, I have some stuff I got to get done. So let's see. Um, what else? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> who was it? that <laughs> Somebody went on, I got their things and they, got, they saw the ads and I'm like, cool. You know, uh, I did, I did go back to all of the um, live streams and added ads and like every 30 minutes. Not bad. I was like I said the other day. I was watching a Rick Beato video. Literally had an ad every three minutes. It was driving me crazy. Um, short story. Short story. Short story. Um, uh, let's see. Can't think of a short story. Let me. Short story. Hmm, that's a good one, Charlie. I need a, I need a subject. Uh... Oh, I, okay. I've, I, yeah, I've got one. Um, so my band in Indiana, before I moved to California, I had a, a top 40 band. Um, and we worked a lot because the, um, the trumpet player who was kind of the leader of the band, he uh, owned a booking agency and managed about 30 bands. And of course, he got his band the best gigs. So the, the gigs... Um, oh, sure. I'll do a Discord link right now. Uh, where is that? Here we go. And um, so we... Um, uh, link right here. Invite people. Okay. Uh, all right, so here's a link, Verdi. And um, so uh, we would, you know, we played a, you know, a lot of gigs. Um, we did mostly like proms, homecoming dances. Um, this was, you know, 79, 80, 81, 82. And then I moved here in January of 83. Um, so, you know, proms um, and then frat parties, a lot of frat parties or, or, or occasionally a college like dance for the whole college or something like a smaller college would have a dance for all of the students rather than. And this was one of them we, we did in Hanover. I think it was Hanover College, which is where it would be funny if uh, 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 what's his name? Woody Harrelson was there. Did he go to Hanover College? I know he's from Hanover, Indiana. Uh, let's see, Woody Harrelson. Just curious. I'm a big Cheers fan. 
I love Cheers. And he always talks about, and he always talk about Hanover. <laughs> Maybe he's not. Oh, it says he's from, oh yeah, went, he went to Hanover College. So when did he go there? Uh, early life. Yeah, his dad was received life sentence for a 1979 killing of a judge. Did you know that? Um, attended. Uh, oh, that's right. He knew Mike Pence. I forgot about that. He knew Mike Pence in college. Um, hopefully, I'm not going to lose my. No, okay, still got that. My computer shutting. Out. Let's see. Doesn't say, well, how old is he? That would tell me. Yeah, so he's my exactly my age. Dang, he's like two. So let's see. When I went to, when I was there, he may have been there. In fact, I, I would be shocked if he wasn't. That's cool. If I ever meet him, I'll ask him because he would. He might remember this. Um, so we were supposed to play this outdoor event in Hanover College, Indiana. And we had, you know, we had a big truck full of gear, you know, and we had a big giant PA system and we had light rig and of course keyboards and drums and monitors and guitar amps and all this stuff. And I, um, because I was the young buck in the band, I mean, I'm like at that time I was 20 years old or something. Um, and, uh, the, um, I, the other guys in the band were all in their later 20s. They all married. They all had real jobs. So they just wanted to show up and play the gig and then leave. And so they all got pay cuts, you know, about a year into my tenure with the band. The band all got pay cuts except me. And I got a pay raise because I went early with the crew to help set up. So I, because I was young, I didn't care. And I wanted to make more money. So, and I liked hanging out with the, with the crew. So, because we had a roadie and we had a light guy and we had a sound guy. And uh, so I'd hang out with them and we'd drive down in the truck to the, to the, or drive to the gigs. And Hanover's in the southern part of the state. So it was probably a good two and a half hour drive to get there from Indianapolis. And, get, and it's just pouring rain. And we were supposed to play outside and we we're wondering what the heck we're going to do. And, um, you know, but we're, is it going to get canceled? You know, we didn't know. We drive, we're driving all the way down there. And we get there and they're like, no, we're not going to cancel, but we're moving it into the cafeteria. So this was going to be an outdoor event. They're moving into the cafeteria, and I'm like, oh, okay. And so these kids were amazing. So what they did was they took, like, um, they, they went into the cafeteria, pulled all the chairs out, and stacked them really high, pushed them up against the walls, covered the chairs so you couldn't see them with black, um, like, uh, plastic tarp paper. And then they went outside and cut a bunch of branches, and they stuck it into the tarp paper so it looked like a forest on either side of the cafeteria they actually they took a bunch of sandbags put more plastic tarping around and then brought rocks in and put it around that and created a, a waterfall with a river to a pond in the middle of this cafeteria and so this this show this you know we just did like three sets of top 40 music you know like three 40 minute sets this whole thing uh was supposed to be outside they brought the outside in inside i thought that was really really cool i mean it was really impressive to watch them do it because i'm setting up we're setting up everything and there's they're just like they you know in the same two three hours span that we set up the whole setup um they uh they did you know they got the outdoors to the indoors and that was hanover college so that was pretty cool um so that's a oh did i not post a link Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm the only one that can post links, inter interestingly enough. But did, did that one not work? Let me do another one. It'll be a different, it'll be a different link. Ooh, let's see. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. I'm tired. Dang. Sleepy. Oh, look. Dennis, you can post a link. And look, I'm going to post a link. Let's see if they're even close. They're not even similar. <clears throat> Yukons. No, UCQNS. Weird. Anyway. So, that's that's my story. I should uh, see if anyone I know knows Woody Harrelson and see if they can ask if he was a he might have been there because it would have been a dance that was for the whole school it wasn't like a single frat i'm pretty sure it wasn't a frat that i don't even know if hanover has fraternities 
Um, let's see, you went to Hanover, Hanover. Oh, here's Hanover College. Fraternities, oh yeah, they do have fraternities. Cal Chi Omega, Alpha Del yeah, former chapters. Yeah, so, I don't know anything about fraternities. Um, but anyway, so that's a story. I, you know, the, the funny thing is that, that band I had a lot of stories on. Um, uh, although, yeah, if I usually, if I think of a band, I can usually think of a story. <laughs> so, um, oh, dang, Bonnie. I'm, <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah, well, I'm not that tired. <laughs> I just didn't sleep well last night. Uh, Beth, Beth made brownies. We had friends over. Uh, and uh, Beth made brownies, and I had a brownie, and that's always a mistake. Two reasons. One, the caffeine and the chocolate. I can't have caffeine after three in the afternoon or two in the afternoon, so i got to finish this. I'm touching my face so you can take a sip. Um, and uh, the other thing is, uh, I didn't have it, fortunately, last night, but uh, acid reflux. Oh, my gosh. The first time I ever, <laughs> once when Beth and I were married, first time I ever... <laughs> got acid reflux with her. I'm in bed at night, laying down. Of course, I guess my head got off the pillow, so my head's flat. And so I'm laying on my stomach or something, and it just comes up. And of course, I inhale it, and I'm breathing in bile. And uh, it burns like the dickens, and you feel like you're going to die. So I'm sitting on the edge of the bed trying to cough this up, and my Beth thinks I'm dying. So I'm just, I, I've had it happen many times as a kid, you know, growing up, I, I just didn't know what it was, but I'd had it. Um, and uh, the, um, uh, the uh, you know, I, I was, you know, just all I had to do was keep coughing until I got the last of it. I knew I was waking her up and she, she starts pounding on my back thinking I'm choking. <laughs> so I, I'm trying, I'm trying to deal with this. And then she's like beating the crap out of me. I'm like, and I can't talk. I can't get enough breath to talk to tell her to stop. <laughs> so after I recovered, <laughs> she, she was like scared to death that I died or something. I said, no, you don't have to hit me on the back. I just have to, I just have to start breathing again. So I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's, it's can be kind of scary. And people, and that, I think that's, isn't that how Keith Moon died? I mean, if you're unconscious and you like vomit into your mouth and breathe it in, you're going to die, essentially. You're going to drown on your own vomit. I think that's pretty much how Bonham and Keith Moon died or something similar to that effect. And I've never been drunk, so I, you know, never been in that place where I, I, could, I could do that. I'm always, it always wakes me up <laughs> when it happens. <clears throat> so... Anyway, on that note, I am going to cut it short. Um, so I think, I think if I can remember, I will do scales and I will try to do some diagrams and we'll just do open scales. Uh, we may start in the key of G and maybe do C and, you know, D, E, things like that. But basically the idea is to get as many open strings as involved and possible. So we're going to want to just stick with the, the basic keys that don't have too many sharps or flats. Um, and then um, you can have fun with those. Actually, you can go and we can use the bluegrass tracks that I created and you can use those to practice the scales over. Um, kind of when the chord changes, then you change to the new scale. You can practice that. And, uh, you know, you can play a C major scale over the G chord. Uh, that actually sounds really good. I don't really like the D major scale over the D chord because it has a C sharp in it. I usually like to play the G major scale over the D chord, which means you're playing D mixolydian. We'll talk about that. So you'll understand that. Um, but more importantly than anything is just to, just to, um, this chair is wobbly. More important than anything is just to kind of play what sounds good to you and don't worry too much about what scale you're doing. You don't want to be thinking while you're soloing. Uh, in fact, Lukather, Steve Lukather from Toto, the guitar player from Toto, when I met him not, you know, not that long ago at the NAMM show, maybe 10 years ago, um, I, you know, I said he was, I told me, you know, you're a big reason why I moved out here. I wanted to be a session guitar player. And he goes, well, I'm going to give you this same advice that Larry Carlton gave me. <laughs> he said, don't think, play. <laughs> and I went, wow. And, you know, that kind of astounded me because I listened to, like, one of my favorite solos of all time is the is Larry Carlton's solo on Kid Charlemagne, the Steely Dan song. I mean, it's a great guitar solo. And, um, and the outro solo is great, too. And uh, he... Um, it's like every single note in that is perfect. And he's like doing these substitutions and he does, 
Larry Carlton likes to, like if he's playing over a G, he likes to play a G triad and a D triad. So you get this G major ninth kind of thing going on. And um, so he'll kind of mix it all up with those things. And to me, it sounds like he's thinking because it's so perfect. But if he felt that, that's even more amazing. You know, to be able to feel a solo and yet hit all these points on the solo where it's just like, dang, because that chord progression, it's not, um, it's not just, I think the outro is just a one progression, but the, the chord, chord progression on the solo for Kid Charlemagne is, um, uh, is, is quite complex. And so it's mostly like E minor, G, F, E, something like that. I can't remember. Uh, Alan Hemsworth, reminder for me. Or Alan Holdsworth. Yeah, Hook, good to see you again. Uh, so hopefully you'll get your coffee cup soon. I haven't gotten that email. Oh, you know what? Maybe I have. Because I think it was my Gmail account. Let me see if they we got some issue here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Uh, I don't see anything. Oh, your teaspoon sent to production. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So, but that doesn't say anything. Okay. So I am going to go, I'll see you guys on Monday. And like I said, we'll probably talk a little bit about um, scales. We'll, we'll do that kind of stuff. Okay. And we'll have fun. And, uh, um, oh, you meant the kids. Show. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, it's a great solo. It's one of my favorites, top 10. Um, and of course I transcribed it. I taught it to a bunch of students. My son, Alex, I taught it to him. He learned it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those, if you really want to kind of do like fusion, you, you got to know that solo. It's definitely one of those. You too, Catherine, have a great weekend. Thanks for the idea for Monday. I think that's what I'll, uh, I'll do it. Okay. Yay. Bye-bye.